was. Well, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and get started. Then we'll start with a pledge, and then if Commissioner Patton will do our prayer. Oh. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our gracious Father in heaven, we approach thy throne, recognizing you as a giver and of all good and perfect gifts. We ask your blessing fall tonight as we enter into this meeting that we will have the wisdom and the knowledge to make the decisions that for you for the betterment of our community and for our citizens. Bless us as in this meeting and all through our life. We thank we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Like welcome everybody out tonight. Uh, one thing we're gonna do uh, after we approve the minutes and the uh, bills and stuff, we're probably going to go out of order a few minutes and go into a quick closed session. Uh, I know av has got some scheduling issues he needs to work around, and we want to try to accommodate him, and, but it won't be very long, I promise. We're going to leave Kevin out here. Okay. <laughs> I make a motion we approve the minutes. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. And next item is the bills. I make a motion we pay the bills. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. That motion passes. Now, yeah, yeah, please. Let's go in closed session. Second. Y'all have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Did have closed session. Uh, of course, no business was conducted, so we just had a motion and a second to come back into open session. Uh, we can go ahead and do that if you want to and get that right, uh, I make a motion that we allow our workers to donate three days instead of two days of their sick times. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Now, there is something there, right? They have to have a minimum of so many days minimum before so you're allowed days. to do that. Yes, I think that's correct. And that's already in the, that's in there now. All we're doing is changing the number from two to three. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Okay, let's go back to old business. There is nothing under old business, so new business. First items: hiring of new sanitation laborer. Yes, I ask that we hire uh, Carl Renfro for the sanitation department, starting at ten fifty, going to eleven dollars an hour after ninety days. I'll make a motion. <laughs> Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. That motion passes. Uh, next item is water loss report. Uh, yes, uh, 2020, the 2021 <coughs> water loss report uh, actually has some, some pretty good numbers. Uh, last year we was in 5.8% 5, 5 water loss. Uh, this year it actually dropped to 4.7. Uh, the state of Kentucky said anything under 15% is a fairly well running water system. Uh, we purchased 94 million from the county. We pumped 27 million from the whales. Uh, we sold 116 million to the customers. Uh, also within numbers, uh, on the wastewater side, we uh, we pumped 261 million gallon of waste to the regional sewer. We sold 116 million of it to the customers, uh, which put us at 55% billing which was actually 38% <coughs> billing last year. Or, uh, yeah, up, up from 38% to 55%. So it sounds really good. We, we actually- We're getting audit, that under control. Our audit, you will see numbers on wastewater looking good, but also keep in mind 2021 was starting to dry. So uh, the last couple of years has been running one to three gallon. For every one gallon we build, we three gallon we sent. This year is one to two ratio. So we, we've done well. Better. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> John, I'll let you go ahead and oh. jump in here if you want to go now. Because yes, okay. I knew you, I'm sorry about the That's delay. Okay. No problem. Uh, I, I think I, everyone has a letter we present every year. First of all, I want to thank the GMC Council for the support they've given us and the farmers market. Uh, it's really appreciated. Just a quick rundown. 
we had our second largest largest year as far as uh, dollar wise we've ever had the market. And we were running on a record pace till about the second week of July, and then that surge of COVID mm -hmm. hit us from about there to, to September. Uh, I cut out our customer base, also cut out on some of our vendors because I tell vendors don't worry about competition because the more vendors we have there, the better the market does. And always that's just the way it works out. But uh, uh, so I want to thank you for that. We had about 5,400 people uh, attend our market last year on a rough count. So that's 5,400 people, not only from Beaver Dam, but from the county, surrounding counties that came through. So that was our rough cat customer count from last year. And so uh, uh, the presentation I've got tonight is our grants, it's the same grant we apply for every year from CFA to Community Farm Alliance. Kentucky Double Dollars Grant, or CFA Market Manager Support Grant, Market Event Coordinator, which is a 50 50 match, and then the Kentucky Department of Agriculture Advertising Grant. Uh, the maximum, if we received all those <coughs> grants, would be 3000 That wouldn't be the cost to the, um, to, the, to the city. That would be whatever the matching grants were. I think last year it was around maybe 2300 but we also brought in uh, about $950 worth of uh, vendor fees down there, so it ended up at 1300 So we're asking permission to do this, and then I uh, ask the city to support our grant in that amount. I'll make the motion. I'll say. I think it's a wonderful program. We have a motion and a second. Those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. And I will say the farmer's market played a role in this award that the city won last week with the governor's award for the arts because of the they had a grant through the Arts Council a couple years ago and started incorporating arts in with the market. And once the grant season ended, they continued to do that every year with it and had a lot of success. So we appreciate that. And, and I will tell you that Debbie's already started. Uh, we started a program last year called Gypsy Vendor Days, mm -hmm. where every second Saturday uh, we brought in, um, they're not, actually not vendors for the market, but they surrounded the market with crafts and handmade goods and uh, food trucks, and she's already put out leaflets for that, and she's already got several, um, <coughs> I'm going to tell you, probably seven, eight, nine, ten feedbacks from that. People are interested in coming in on those second Saturdays. I think that's wonderful. Um, and she's already has <coughs> so, a lot of entertainment already lined up for this year. I think she's still got a few days she's working on this. So we've already already begun that for next year. And they're fixing to erect a grain bin down there. Yeah. For the part of to tourism is doing that with one they're doing on the amphitheater, but they had another sm a smaller grain bin to do like for a performance area or something. You really? know how Miss Debbie thought that would go good with the farmers market. Yeah. <laughs> so we were able to get that done. So that should be done sometime April or May. I love the farmers market, and so many people love it. You rarely see me out there because I am not a morning person. If you all had like a brunch afternoon market, yeah. that's a little more my speed. <laughs> but I promote it and love for people. I love to see everybody that enjoys it so, so, so very much. Our farm to table, we got to have it again last year. And we grew about 250 people did. It's always a big event we have at the high school. And we barely got that under the wire before that they kind of shut things down again for a while, right after that, but uh, um, we always eat pretty well, don't Charlie? Yeah. Eat real well. <laughs> All right, thank you, John. Hey, thank y'all. Uh, Jim, you got anything? No. Sam? I don't think I do. Charles? No, my two departments of power are pretty self-sustaining. Kevin? This will be the last month I'll be quiet, so I mean, I'm not gonna, because next month's gonna be pickleball. Oh, like, yeah. Oh. So just get ready. Kevin, uh, Larry, you have anything? Uh, yes, update on the uh, well down at Danny Overton's. They, the state has required another pump test done. Uh, they done pump test at 105 gallon a minute, which we knew would not pass and did not. <clears throat> the best that the state would probably let us do is pump 55 gallons a minute versus the 75 that was anticipated. Uh, the paperwork is going to be submitted into this week. Why would they not let us? That are all down. <clears throat> they, I guess there's a new ruling that you've got to have a pump test done at 30% capacity of what you're seeking, which we were seeking the 75, so they, they want the, the test done at 105. Uh, so the <coughs> static level and the residual level fell too far too fast, so it sets everything back to 55 gallon a minute, what we're probably going to be allowed to pump. 
which is still going to put it's still going to put about seventy nine thousand gallon a day, about two point three million for the month. Uh, that's going to take us off the that's going to take us off the thirty or thirty five percent less dependent from the county and back down to about twenty five percent. So. It's going to do what name? We will be buying at 75 gallon a minute. We had anticipated we was going to buy 30 to 35 percent less water from okay. the county per month. Going to 55 gallon a minute, it's only it's going to take it down to 25 percent less purchasing. Okay. Uh, update on the sure <coughs> water meter pressure change out. We're about a, about 30 percent done with that. Uh, we read meters today. We're doing rereads tomorrow, then we'll get fired up again on changing them. Uh, it's kind of a hit and miss with the weather and what else is going on. Uh, perfect timing for us because we are a little slow this year, this time of year, but it's also winter. So, how many you like, like doing? Uh, about 950. Should take too long. We will. Compared to what you've already done. That's right, that's right. Slowly but surely. Well, the neighbor called and said, what do we got to lay out in the yard for? I said, they're changing your meter out, ma'am. I want to know who chose that color of blue to put on the... Uh, well, that's actually, you know, through the 811, you know. I drove by there and I was like, green. what the heck is the, that in the yard? <laughs> Waterloo. <laughs> yeah. Some of the hard ones that we, you know, we have a hard time finding, we just go ahead and paint yeah. them. That way you it's can lovely. see it. It's lovely. <laughs> okay, is that all you got? Okay, I got two things real quick, and then we'll turn it over to uh, Mike and David. I'd like to ask permission from this commission to advertise for an RFQ for rental of the old Gaither building. Uh, I've had several people express interest in it, but I, t I told Larry, I said, you know, we really want to kind of watch what goes in down there with being on Second Street with the, all the activities and stuff we're doing and with some of the stuff we're looking, the mix we're trying to get in down there. Uh, you never know who might have a good idea of something and let them come to us instead of us sitting, okay, we got a building for rent at X amount of dollars a month. Let them come to us and tell us what they would like to do with it, what they would like to do to the building and how much they're willing to pay for it. Just to see what kind of response we get. Okay, well, I moved to uh, advertise for RFP for the Gaither building. <coughs> You said RFQ. Uh, it's RFP. I wrote okay. RFQ. Okay. That, I'm, I'm doing an RFQ. We're working on another RFQ for another project. So. Okay. I'll, I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. That motion passes. <laughs> Another item I have, we've talked about it for some time and needed it at one point here, so I just went ahead and asked for some quotes. We've been talking about putting an 85-inch monitor on the wall where we can hook into a computer, whether it's either wireless or hardwired for presentations or whatever. And I got two quotes. And uh, one of them is from Taylor, T and E LLC, which is Dwayne Taylor. His includes an 86-inch 4K UHD smart TV, the Echo Gear full motion wall mount bracket, Bluetooth soundbar subwoofer, HDMI 4 cable and VGA converter, labor to install and set up, uh, install electrical outlet. He's going to put the electrical outlet behind the TV so it won't have cords showing. Uh, it's going to install all the HDMI wire to this corner over here where the, the, all the controls will be at. And again, all the wiring and stuff will be hot, hidden and not, not visible. And then install the VGA to HDMI converter. So there's some of the computers have the bigger cables and some of them have the littler cables and then there's some that are wireless. So we'll be able to take care of everything. His quote was $3,750.24. And I got one from Voyage Technology. Uh, Andy sent this to me. I have sent an uh, email back to him on Friday requesting some more information. First of all, he sent, he sent it and he failed to put the installation on there. But then I asked him to make sure the installation included all this electrical outlet hidden, all the wiring hidden. And I didn't hear back from him. And I sent a request again today. I told him I needed to know by 5 o'clock today. And I still haven't heard back from him. But. Their quote is for the, an <coughs> LG, which I think is the same unit, actually. LG 86-inch 4K HUD uh, Smart TV. Uh, the HDMI wireless BYOD presentation switch. <coughs> uh, an Apple TV 4K. Do you know what that is? 
Yeah, it might be. It might be part of a smart TV. It might be. Okay. Or, or it's a, it's its own device. It looks like a little remote. Yeah. With a little box. Yeah, that's what it is. Specialty cable, cable, a wall plate for HDMI, and an extra large, heavy-duty 60 to 100-inch uh, hanger for the uh, TV wall mount. And then they've got a installation configuration of provided equipment and user training. Uh, their total bid was three thousand five hundred and sixty-seven dollars and ninety-five cents. And like I said, I'm not clear if that includes all the electrical and cable stuff or not. Did it give you an insulation uh, time, time frame? No. I know I've got Cole Taylor to do some work at church. He can't get him to do some electrical wire until July. He's that by far behind. He did ask me if we did it. Would I care if he did it on a weekend? I told him that didn't bother me. But I didn't do he backed yeah. up. I'm not sure, and again, I don't know enough about, about it. On Taylor's, it talked about the uh, cable and BGA converter, and this one doesn't on Voyage. It just talks I about think that. I Apple does that. It, it, I think so, it, doesn't it? Most of them will allow some sort of screen mirroring. So they put one in church, and that's what they use it for. Know. Okay. There, there's a, a thousand different ways to do it. Well, see, that's what I was uh, you know, suspecting. But for what you're talking about, you would probably, like what you were saying about having it all set up over there, would be the way you want to do it. Because even if you can do it wirelessly, you're still going to be... You something. still got to have some kind of equipment and yeah, stuff. Yeah, because not everybody's going to be able to do it. Not everybody's going to have the right computer to do it. So. Yeah, that's why I said I wanted to be able to do wire and... Wired in and wireless. So, so that's what we've got. But I do think the need is there, and we do have the funding to take care of it. And I'm good with either one of them. I make no difference to me. So. Y'all, tell me what you think. Do you feel that we need to wait until we get clarification? For the one bid, or anybody thoughts, opinions on that, or what? I would like to know. That's why I asked Andy Friday, and then again today when I didn't hear from him. But you should have called him. Call well, I talked to him first, and he's the one who put me off with Andy. Well, he, and if you told me he ain't got back to you, that's what I'm saying. He yeah. ain't got back. So, I in just, other words, we've had one group that wasn't interested in getting back with us. Well, he just hadn't gotten back with me yet. I don't know. I don't, he may not even be in town. I don't know. The bids aren't that far apart either, are they? Like $200 or something like that? Less than $200, yeah. Well, I wish there was verification on it. If it was all the same, then I would take low bidder no matter what. But I don't, I don't, well, I don't know. You know, we can make the motion that if everything's the same, take the lower bidder. I'm fine with then it. Find make out. that motion. Get the clarification. If we get the clarification and, and see if they got bid, additional. We take the lower bid. If not, then see what the price difference is with the other, and still take the lowest bid, but make sure we've got all that in there. Making sure it's apples to apples. Yeah. Is, that, is it okay if I do that as a motion? That I'm good with it. Because I, I, I'm not too worried about either one of the vendors. I mean, I'm not, I don't care about either one of them either. I mean, they're yeah. both good. I don't, I don't, I've had dealings with both of them. They've both done me good, so I don't have any problems with it. And this may have everything in there. I just. Again, I, that's what I'm saying. I just, like I said, I'd like clarification. But I would I kind like of think motion. it. I don't know. Before you move on, George, you make a notation of that. Excuse myself from the meeting on this one. He's I don't outside. want nepotism to be involved. Um, He's outside in the parking lot. <laughs> we have a motion, but do we have a second? No, I don't think we have a second. I'll second it. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Thank you all very much. I think this is something we'll get a lot of use. I think it'd be a very 
good thing to have. And it's been something we've needed. We just so the community will we'll probably use it to earn more having that. Yeah, it's when we have the veterans program on on Memorial Day, we, oh. Memorial Day, Memorial Day, which one? Is Memorial. It? Memorial. Memorial Day. They'll use it, I'm sure. I mean, I, I can see them use that. So. Well, even if it's just the background with exactly. I mean, yeah. Okay, Mike and David, y'all can arm wrestle over who goes first. Is it age before beauty? What is that? <laughs> All right, so what we have is the 2021 annual report. Uh, first, we have kind of a letter from me to you guys. You can read that. I'll kind of go over this pretty quick. So the first set of graphs, kind of a breakdown per type of run per year, comparison from 2020 to 2021. Um, you can see we had a big increase in runs this year from 310 in 2020 to 782 in 2021. What do you attribute that to? Uh, a lot of COVID. Uh, people are starting to get out and about. More things are going on. Um, there was a lot of unknowns with the fire service and COVID to begin with, as far as guys being trained, proper equipment. So there's a lot of ones we didn't respond to in 2020. Um, we kind of took a back seat to some of it to let EMS kind of handle it all. Um, now that we've kind of got the training and equipment and stuff up to par, we're able to respond and handle it a little bit more, especially now we understand it more. Um, of course, then there's a breakdown. So there's 73% of the calls we respond to when we medical. 2020, nobody went anywhere, did anything. So they got card up 21. They, yeah, there was a lot more people, a lot, a lot more people out, a lot more things going on, a lot more activity. And then, of course, everything was in full swing. When people started going, we had the big spike in COVID. So we had a big increase in people being sick as well, too. So. Um, the next one kind of breaks down our fire responses between structure fires, vehicles, brush and rubbish, and then fire alarms and false alarms. It's, when you look at it, it's pretty well almost 25, 25, 25 on how that one is. The next one's kind of a breakdown of vehicle accidents. It shows ones with injuries, ones without. We did have two fatalities this year and one boating accident. Uh, fatalities are down one, I think in 2020 we had three. The next one shows that. I don't mean to interrupt, but those they were out of the city of Memphis. Yes, and no fatalities inside the city of Memphis. Um, the other responses are here's the breakdown on them. We had nine gas leaks or hazmat calls, four down trees, five down power lines, and one weather event, which was the hurricane. Oh, hurricane. Yeah. <coughs> that counted for more than one, didn't it? Should have. Should have. <laughs> Y'all were out a little while. Yeah, we were about 36 hours, I think, is what we spent on that one. Um, the next graph is a breakdown of what calls were inside the city limits and what were outside based on type of call. Um, our biggest thing was medicals, of course, and the biggest amount of calls for medicals was inside the city limits, with 442 medicals inside the city limits and 130 outside. The Last page is kind of a breakdown per department for the rest of the departments in the county. Um, Beaver Dam runs 39% of the calls that were paid back for the <coughs> departments within Ohio County. That's 782. The next closest department was Hartford with 428. And that's total calls. So what do you attribute that to? They have two stations. <sighs> to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure what the factor is. I mean, as far as the type of runs we get paid out on, everybody across the county is the same. We have one standard guideline for all fire, or all fire departments. We is all the same is Beaver Dam's area that much bigger than Hartford's? Not really. It's not um, as big, Harvard is it? It has more ground. I think what a lot of it is is uh, probably our population. Because if you look back, our medical calls inside the city alone was 442. Their total calls were 428. Mm -hmm. So we had more medical calls inside the city limits of Beaver Dam than the second department did overall ones. So I think a lot of it is just kind of into the population density. Like Hartford's got a bigger area, but a lot of it's farm ground. You know, we got north of Hartford. Yeah. And all the areas in the now 69, most of it's just open ground. <clears throat> Any questions? Doing a good job. Appreciate everything you do.
turn it over to the second page. It just kind of gives y'all a breakdown of uh, what each officer worked, uh, accidents were, cases open. Uh, we had 3,428 calls for service. It's up on up here. Mm -hmm. DUIs, we had 30. Uh, the only difference I see this year and last year is our alcohol went to 23 and our drugs went to 7. It was about 50 50 for the last two or three years. Uh, this went to 23 and 7. Uh, well, that's really not surprising. Is with an extra officer now? And, right. and we got another officer. Another officer on, I mean. Right. Uh, our warranty, uh, there was 116 served. Uh, normally it's 275, 300. Again, COVID got in there. Uh, we got to a point there for a while we didn't know whether to arrest them or just give them a pat on the back and send them on their way. Because the jail wouldn't, didn't want to take them. And I'm not blaming the jail. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, you no they didn't want to take them. Uh, so there's no use us arrest them and then have to call a judge and get them unarrested uh, unless it was a serious felony charge, you know, rape, something in that line that was serious. Uh, you know, we served, we did some, uh, wrote them criminal summons even to appear in court. Uh, then it's got uh, drug related, it's got uh, marijuana, meth, <coughs> trafficking marijuana, trafficking meth, and uh, then 610 traffic stops. So if you look over on that next page, it's the, the next two pages actually just kind of break down uh, and gives you an idea like speeding, you know, 127. Uh, if you can just look down through there, there's, there won't show up again 116. Uh, what I see down towards the bottom, terroristic threatening, which is 10. So it just gives you kind of an idea of what was uh, the charges were. Uh, on those two, next two pages and other, the others are just uh, some charts that you can look at but if you look over it's about the, it's, I think it's like the six from the back it's uh, got the accident mm -hmm. summary uh, it's broke down uh, the accidents are still pretty much the same uh, we had 208 that's what we work and it, every year from 25, 205 to 215. Every year, just pretty much regular clockwork. And it's pretty much in the parking lots, isn't it? Yeah, 76 in the parking lot, 72, 62, and 231, 30 in the city streets, 10 out on West Kentucky Parkway, and uh, 20 from Walmart to McDonald's. And we always try to throw that in there. Uh, we had 179 non injuries, 29 injuries, no fatal ones in the city. Uh, happy to report that. And then we always put from Walmart to McDonald's. Uh, there was 15 without injuries and five with injuries. So that gives you a little idea of that. Uh, and the rest of it uh, is pretty much just grass that y'all can look at yourself when you, when you got time. Uh, we did have uh, cases that were worked, 155 cases, uh, 145 of them were closed. Most of those that wasn't closed, I, I know of one burglary, burglary that wasn't a robbery out at uh, IGA South here. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't and probably never will be. Mm -hmm. uh, and the others are identity theft. That somebody's got somebody's identity and used it in California mm -hmm. or something. Well, you're, you're never going to stop those. So that's that's pretty much what the open cases are. But, uh, if you want to go over sometime, you've got any questions, just call me or if you've got any questions, you know. <coughs> let me know. See if I answer them. Thank you. I do have one. Do you see any, have you all had any issue with, uh, I know there was this big thing last year in a lot of your bigger cities, especially out west and in the, some of the bigger cities about defunding police and anti-police. Have you all seen any of that? Just what? Well, he doesn't count. <laughs> no. But you've not had any uh, Karens when no. you pull them over that no. yell at you? No. Negative for that part. I haven't heard any here in the city or anywhere around here. You know. Good deal. Bob's always. 
Well, you're making him joking. We're going to be mugged, y'all. <laughs> well, you're going to be, I tell him, you're going to be the last one we come to, too, when you need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he'll start following around and uh, checking his speed and all that. Yeah, if we don't, don't leave me alone, I'll just put his house up for sale again. Does anybody have anything else? Oh. I've, got, I've just got right in and ask him. I oh. guess I should. I very well speak up. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I've made it. No. <laughs> Thank you. I'm ready to go. My PJs are calling. <laughs> <laughs>